Pecos Bill Invents the 10-Gallon Hat. Pecos Bill Invents the 10-Gallon Hat is a tall tale. A tall tale is a kind of folk tale that was originally passed on by, the, by word of mouth about fictional characters that possessed super, superhuman strengths. Now, the characters weren't always fictional from the beginning. Some tall tale characters are actual people like Johnny Appleseed, who did good things, but the stories about them grew and grew and the, and the, the character traits of the person got really exaggerated and he became like a fictional character. Now, Pecos Bill started out as a fictional character and he has some superhuman qualities and those tales were told over and over again and then eventually they were written down and stories like that we call tall tales. Now, the exaggerated qualities of those characters, there's a very fancy word that means exaggerated, and that word is hyperbole. Hyperbole is exaggeration, extreme exaggeration. Another kind of writing technique that you often find in uh, tall tales is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia are words that sound like what they mean, like bam and pop. So we're going to read Pecos Bill now. And you can keep an eye out for onomatopoeia, words that sound like what they mean. And definitely keep an eye out for hyperbole, extreme exaggeration. Pecos Bill Invents the 10-Gallon Hat by Kevin Strauss, illustrated by David Harrington. Pecos Bill Invents the 10-Gallon Hat. Before Pecos Bill, cowboys didn't know how to do much of anything. They didn't know how to rope cattle. They didn't know how to drive cattle, and they had no idea how to deal with the hot Texas sun. One day, Pecos Bill was working a herd near the Rio Grande, and the sun was hot enough to fry bacon on a boulder. Looking around, he saw that it was nice and shady under the cottonwood trees by the river. So he rode over to cool off under one. It was comfortable there but that wasn't where the cattle were. That's okay, thought Bill. If the cattle want to stay on the prairie, I got a mind to move the tree. He tied up his, he tied his rattlesnake rope around the biggest cottonwood on the river and said, giddy up to his horse. Now, no ordinary horse could move a tree like that, but Bill didn't have an ordinary horse. He had lightning a horse that packed more wallop than a prairie thunderstorm. The black stallion pulled and pulled and the roots, pop, jumped right out of the ground. But the tree fell flump, burying 20 head of cattle in branches and leaves. Pecos Bill had to spend the rest of that day digging those cows out. But Bill wasn't one to give up after just one try. Well, if I can't move the whole dang tree, maybe I can move the shady part, he thought. For a while, it worked fine. The trouble started when Bill got to town and tried to walk into a hotel. He opened the door and bam, fell right on his rear end. Pecos got up and ran at the door again, but bam, he landed flat on his back. Then he realized why he didn't fit through the door. But Pecos wasn't one to be flummoxed after just two tries. The next day, he went walking through the town. It was a Saturday, and when he got to the end of the main street, he saw a group of men playing some sort of newfangled ball game. But it wasn't the men's game that interested Pecos Bill. It was their caps. It looked as if those caps kept the, kept the sun off the players' faces. Bill bought a cap at the store, and the next day he wore it out on the prairie. The cap kept the sun off his face all right, but that sky fire still burned the back of his neck. And when a thunderstorm came up, the rain soaked the cloth cap. Well, that didn't pan out, thought Pecos Bill. Not one to cash it in after only three tries, Pecos Bill went to town the next day looking for another hat. As he was walking down the main street, he heard a clanging bell. 
Bill dove out of the way as a horse-drawn fire wagon rushed past him. As he lay there in the dust, Bill could see smoke coming from the livery stable. Pecos Bill whistled up lightning and rode out of town lickety-split. He pulled out his rattlesnake rope, lassoed up a, thunder, uh, up a storm cloud, and dragged it back to town. He hog-tied the cloud and squeezed it so hard that it gushed rain, dousing the flames. The volunteer firefighters were so happy that they made Pecos Bill an honorary member of the fire brigade and gave him his very own metal firefighter helmet. I reckon this might be just what I need, said Bill. While the back brim of the helmet shaded his neck, the metal got hotter and hotter in the sun. By noon, Pecos Bill took off the helmet and wrapped a wet bandana around his head. Not one to ski-daddle after only four tries, Pecos Bill sat on his bedroll that night, figuring about hats. The baseball cap only shaded my face, and it didn't keep me dry. The firefighter helmet shaded my neck, but it got too hot. Just then, lightning bent down and pushed the two hats together. That gave Bill an idea. Wait a minute. What if I made a hat with a wide brim like a baseball cap to shade my neck, and a high crown like a firefighter helmet to, shade the, to shed the rain, and in a waterproof fabric? so it wouldn't get too hot. Pecos Bill patted his stallion's neck. Lightning, you're a genius. Now, most people know that Pecos Bill was the most famous cowboy in the world, but few people realize that he was also an expert tailor. Pecos Bill bought some beaver felt in town, and using his baseball cap and firefighter helmet as models, he sewed and pressed the very first 10-gallon hat. After that, Pecos was carry, would carry his own shade wherever he went. And when it rained, the water just rolled right off the crown and over the brim, leaving Pecos Bill's head nice and dry. What's more, it made a handy bowl. When other cowboys saw how useful Pecos Bill's invention was, they gave a big yeehaw and ordered some of their own. Pretty soon, even the brand new Greenhorn Cowboys were wearing them. I'm telling you, that's the way it was, and that's the way it is. And that's the end of this story. The end.